DDR4 memory was released to the public in 2014, with Intel's X99 being the first consumer chipset to support the new standard. However, there was no backwards compatibility with DDR3, so enthusiasts and hardcores who wanted to upgrade had to buy new RAM, new motherboards, and new CPU all at the same time. Ugh. So the launch of Skylake in August 2015 brought compatibility for both DDR4 and DDR3, so hip hip huzzah, right? Actually not so fast. There's more to this story than meets the eye. Like a transformer. Look at them up there on the top of those power poles. You never know what they're doing. No. No, not no. <laughs>video actually began as an exploration into the performance differences between DDR3 and DDR4 on the Skylake platform, and we will talk about those things, but as Keyes researched this video, this is what Keyes looks like with a book, he discovered things, important and scary things, that sort of changed the flow of the subject, and we'll share those things with you too. So when Intel first released information about Skylake, news surfaced that the yeah, integrated memory controller on the CPUs would support both DDR3 and DDR4 memory, and this was great news for users who were already running DDR3 in their systems, which is pretty much everyone who had upgraded since DDR3 was released way back in 2007. But then when Skylake launched, Intel only listed official support for DDR3L, a type of DDR3 that runs at 1.35 volts rather than the standard 1.5 volts. But why? Well, DDR4's default voltage is 1.2 and it can go as low as 1.05, meaning that the memory controller for Skylake was designed for much lower voltages, meaning that higher voltage operating memory would not actually be officially supported. So while the lower voltage of DDR3L memory can allow for greater power efficiency and a longer lifespan, the fact that it's much less common than the old standard DDR3 significantly decreases to almost nothing. The pool of people who can actually transfer their old RAM and takes a lot of the wind out of the whole backwards compatibility sales thing. Despite this, a few motherboard makers like Asus, Gigabyte, and ASRock released Z170 Skylake motherboards that listed support for not just DDR3L, but also regular DDR3 modules running at 1.5 and even 1.6 volt, which, what are those guys thinking, right? Well, actually, I mean, technically, it'll work. You know, if you install standard DDR3 sticks in these motherboards, They'll probably run fine and the board itself won't be damaged, but what almost certainly will be damaged over much time is the CPU, specifically the memory controller, which as we've said, is not rated for those higher voltages. I mean, there's a chance everything could work out fine, but do you really want to take the risk? Okay, so then back on the original topic. Let's say you do have some DDR3L memory on hand. Skylake motherboards support either DDR4 or DDR3L, not both, with the exception of a couple of B150 models from ASRock and Biostar that have both DDR3 and DDR4 slots on the motherboard, although you can only use one of them at a time. So should you then get a DDR3L compatible motherboard to save a few bucks by keeping your old memory? Tough question. So let's look at some benchmarks of Skylake with DDR4 versus DDR3 RAM. And we can see some modest gains from the newer memory here and there with overall not really a drastic change in performance going from one to the other. However, with DDR4, you do get ever so marginally lower power consumption, ever so marginally faster speeds, and the benefit of then being able to, in theory, carry that memory forward with future upgrades. Although. Nothing's ever a guarantee. Maybe DDR4L is going to be, you know, inst whatever. So to recap then, you can run DDR3 on a, a compatible motherboard with some risk of damaging your CPU over time. And if you happen to have some DDR3L, you can buy a DDR3 Skylake motherboard, but you might be shooting yourself on the foot in terms of future expansion because one benefit of DDR4 we haven't mentioned yet is that it will be available and in fact is already available in higher density configurations than DDR3. So if you wanna throw 16 gig DIMMs into your system, 
DDR4 is going to be the way to go. So as always, it's important to carefully weigh your options and do your research before jumping in head first. Although you probably shouldn't be jumping anywhere head first unless you're a, you know, skilled diver and quasi-professional gymnast like myself. All right, so that's it for this video. Guys, like it if the video floats your boat. Click here to watch more videos. Click here to follow us on social media. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. Now, it's time for me to visit that great lake in the sky, also known as clouds. That is my alarm, which means it's time for me to wake up. Uh, must be early. Bye-bye.